As we all know, your shop is not a static entity. Let there be changes. Welcome back to the shop and the channel. And after finishing my shop overhaul in the spring, wait a minute, is the shop ever really finished? No, that's a lie. I found some things I want to change uh, in the shop. And one thing I have to do to, to finish a project um, more on those later. Uh, the first thing I want to do is at the workbench. The second thing I want to do probably is at the chop saw and the third thing is probably the drill press. They may not be in that order, but let me show you what I'm talking about. For the drill press, I have uh, the old table that was on my previous drill press. And uh, this is one of those little prepackaged units from uh, Rockler, I think. No, this was, this was, uh, this was Woodpecker's. And um, I built a fence for it, and it worked fine. The problem this time around is the uh, arms here, and the fence itself is, if I'm cutting, coming down low to drill something small. So obviously I need a new table. Now I'm going to build this table from scratch. It's going to go back further behind the, 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 the post and about another inch out this way, and probably this width or maybe a little bit more. Let me show you what I have in mind. This is going to involve gears, metal shafts, and knobby little handles. What I mean is, and this is not my idea, uh, a link in the description when I do this video of where I got this idea from. Several people have done this. I'm going to move the up and down lift crank for the drill press to here. So you can just crank it up and down here. I'm going to move the locking handle out here so you can just grab over here. You don't have to reach around and you, you can lock it here. And the reason the, this table has to go back further than the post itself because that's where I have to mount some of the holding parts for the shafts and gears. What I'm going to do for the cranking up and down is I've got a pair of 90 degree gears here. So it'll go this way and then go that way and then do the thing with the thing. So that's what I need to do in the drill press. Not critical right now, it's usable as it is. Let's go, let's move on over to the, uh, to the chop saw. With the chop saw, I found that this is on rubber wheels, this is on wood and, and has posts and whatever for adjustment, but things still shift. So what I'm gonna do is gonna make it so this platform that holds the chop saw itself is adjustable in all three axes, up, down, well up and down actually, right, left, up and down right and left, up and down, front and back. So this will become adjustable. So if it gets even a little bit out of alignment, I know, kind of anal, right? Uh, I can I just unloosen it, take a couple of screws and, uh, and, and do the adjustment and then lock it back down again. The other thing I want to do is um, I want to make the box wider. And that's going to be really easy to do. I got plenty of wood up here for that. I got plenty of space here and here where I can take the box and mount it up on to the bench itself, here and here, to make the box wider. Um, just I want more room to move the thing around. It's great now, but who knows what I'll need it for later. And the other thing is I want to run the T-tracks, both on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, to uh, allow me to have st stop blocks on both sides. Now, I have this stop block I've been using that I made a long time ago. Well, not so much a long time ago. And this goes like so and clamps in place, and that's great, but uh, I want something that I can, in a T-track that's behind the fence, I can flip out of the way. When I need it, I flip it over, and I'm going to put th uh, screws in it to make it fine, finely adjustable. And also, sawdust can block this one up, the new one I make it so it won't, you can't get sawdust jammed up on it. Now, on to the workbench. Let's show you what we got to do to the workbench, and that's going to be the subject of this video. Workbenches get messy, and I mean messy with finishes. Now, this is basically my finishing space for smaller projects here in the shop. We have a small finishing room downstairs in the basement, but um, Mar uses that mostly for her stuff and for other small projects, but I like to finish my stuff up here in the shop. And as you can see from this, I'm gonna come down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, there's a, a video deep dark in the, back, in the bowels of my channel where I did the same thing I'm doing to this bench. Um, but I decided to just shoot another video 
and show you how I did it with this one, because this is different than the bench I had before. That was a store-bought bench and weirdness, whatever. So what I want to do is I'm going to build a rack that, out of these pieces of plywood and this, this dowel. I'm going to cut down this piece of uh, paper, roller. This is the builder's, builder's paper you buy at the big box stores. And I'm going to mount it down here. So you can, when you need to, you can pick it up and just roll it across your bench and clamp it in the end vise. And then your bench is protected. So let's look at what's involved on the other side of the bench. See, I've, uh, I got a bus, power bus uh, screwed onto the leg here. And this is where that roller mount is going to go. So I have to take this off and move it. I'm probably going to move it to the inside around here. So it's um, actually easier to reach. I don't know, we'll, maybe on this side here to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to mount the roller mount thing here. So cut like, kind of like a uh, uh, roller thingy for, uh, um, for uh, paper towels. And I'm going to mount that here so it's underneath everything. And then you can just reach down here, pick it up, and roll it up over the bench and clamp it down and, and do your finish work without uh, causing too much mess on the bench itself. The backboard that's going to be screwed into the legs of the bench is made out of, again, a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. This is the really good stuff. I've had this for quite a while. Um, I was going to do something else with it, but now I'm going to do this with it because it'll last. And then the dowel is three-quarter inch, and I've already tested it through the center of the of the piece of, uh, of, of the roll of the paper, and it works fine. And this is going to be cut down to 23 inches because that's the width of the bench, where out the work surface. So we cut down to 23 inches. The distance between the, the two ends that are going to hold the, the, the dowel with the paper is going to be a little over that. I think, it's, I think I've got it set to 23 and a quarter. And uh, I will make the end pieces out of this piece of plywood, which I'll cut out to the shape that I want. They'll be co-drilled to get on the drill press, so I wind up with the holes exactly in the same place at either end of the, uh, of the uh, piece of uh, backer board. So let me set this up, and we'll go ahead and make some cuts. Backer board. The uh, these are cut to. This is four inches in diameter. This is cut to four and three quarter, and it gives me enough room to offset the hole about a half inch from the backer board from here to here to where the hole is. So there's room for things to move, and these will be glued and screwed on the ends. And that when you look at when I measure that, there we go. Just right. Yep. So that's where we are now. I marked where the hole's going to be drilled, the, you know, the three-quarter inch distance from, from the bottom there. Um, and uh, I've double-sided taped the two pieces together so I can get these holes as close as possible to center. So first time I ever used this drill press on camera. Master switch on. Okay, on, I want more speed. Holes! Off, master off. I can pull it apart now. If I can get it apart. Now I can screw it in place. I'm using two number eight screws on each one, and between that and the glue, we should be fine. What is that doing in there?
Oh, I grabbed them from the number six bin. Got to grab them from the number eight bin. How did I know they're number eight? Um, square drive's different. Number sixes are number one bit, and number eights are and tens are no, and are number uh, two bit. Let's see, do both ends so that I can get, um, oops, there we go, get it held in place and I can remove the clamp and do the other screw. Okay, so now I can take the clamp off and do the other number eight screw. Like so. And like so. There we go. So, yeah, I had uh, paper to, to protect the bench from the glue stains. So let's get the rod and see how it fits. That's perfect. The holes are drilled 5 eighths, 7 eighths, by the way. And I uh, may or may not need to put a stop on the on the dowel, dowel, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. The next thing I want to do is cut the paper to the right length so that it fits in here neatly. And that thing's three feet long, don't need three feet. Uh, I showed how to do this once before. Let's show how to do it again. Yeah, chop saw. Easiest way to cut this stuff to, to length is the chop saw. See you. I want to clean up one end so it's nice and flush and, and cool. It's up ears. So I clean up one end, make it square, and then, then I can just measure out the distance I need. In fact, I'll use the box thingy, the, the holder, to get the measurement I need to make the full length of this. And now, I'll get this, and that's the measurement I want, and that's where the cut's going to go, but I want to go a little bit to the right of that cut. Let's do this. By the way, cutting paper like this is chunky, and it's also, uh, it's a word I'm looking for, smelly. The reason for going in and out like that is this is paper, it's pure cellulose. It doesn't have the gaps and glues and stuff that regular wood does. It's made of wood, but it's pure cellulose. So you're, it's, it's very dense. So let's go, let's try this out. All right. Let's get this thing out of the way. Move my number six screws. I can put them back in the bin. So this fits in here just like that. This goes in here. Oops, I see what's going on here. Ah, yeah, okay. It's all bunched up in there. It's, there's a fold inside of the tube hole. There's no tube in here. It's just the paper's just rolled up. Here we go. And there we go. Now I gotta clear up the, the plug and everything and screw this in place. And I'll have my, protect my workbench paper roll thingy. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of a tight fit here. So I've got a piece of wood here that blocks off the inner portion of the vise here so that no, this won't interfere with any wood that I clamp in the vise that has to go low. Now, I got this drilled and put together as you saw, and what I've done is I've put a hole through here with a little peg to lock in it. The hole is bigger than a quarter inch, but the quarter inch at the bottom, so it grabs a hold of that 
dowel, as you can see right there. There's a dowel. Um, I've pre-drilled the holes, so I need to go ahead and put this in. The, 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 the dowel that goes into the, um, uh, into, that holds the, uh, the roll of paper has already been drilled, so it'll, it'll, it'll mount in there without an issue. And it's really tight under here, and my knees are not happy. So let's, let's, let's get this kind of put together here. You know, when you're dealing down here, just start the, start the bits first. Start the drills. Excuse me. Start the freaking screws. So I can get... And don't, and don't put it into my knee. That would be bad. Okay, so now I can hold it up just like this. I know about where it needs to go. And I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch from the board. Give me a little space there. All right. Now, now I need to level that. Well, I don't need to level it really, but it's just, you know, a good idea to, common good practice to make things level plumb and square when you can. So let's go let's stick that on there. Yeah. And eh. there it is, right there, that's level. Love this thing. This is the, in case you're interested, this is the Ryobi Quiet Strike. I don't know the difference between the Quiet Strike and the, and the one that makes more noise. And it's also, um, uh, and this is not an HP, I don't think, whatever. But it's the Quiet Strike, and the trigger is really sensitive. I don't know if you can see that in camera. So it's really got a great trigger. So you can really tune how far that's going to go in and at what speed easily with your finger. So there we go. Let me get the, uh, the rod, the dowel. Where did I put the dowel? Ah, it's right here. And the roll of paper, which is ready to go. And the dowel goes in from here, from this side. There we go. Get this in there. Come on, get in there. There we go. It's a snug fit. There we go. Ugh. Okay. Now, I want to get this. Uh, oops. Oops, 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 oops. I forgot about that. Since this doesn't have a tube in it, the inner, ro inner part of the roll can squeeze out as you're putting the dowel in. So I'm going to see if I can do this all the way through before I try it for reals. Yeah. I think that's better. Go in from that side. Doesn't matter how this unrolls. It's all going in the same place. There we go. Uh huh. And then there it goes. And there, it's in. It's in place. Oh yeah, you know what I need to do? I need to cut the label. I'm sitting on a little box of wood. Bingo, howsy howsy. So, let's demo. I still have to, you know, clean up the bench top and reseal it with some more, I use polyurethane and wax on top of that, but it's gotta sand this down and clean up some of the mess, but, Let's reduce that mess. Voila! And I can roll this back in if I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use it right now. But now I've got this 23 inch by whatever that is, I can't remember what it is, surface where I can put down work that I want to do some finish work on, uh, light sanding, whatever, and it protects the bench from getting the chemistry on it. That's it. That's all there is. Uh, so until next time, of course, make three great things out of wood. Protect your bench if you can. Maybe I should put a hand crank on this thing. No, I don't think I'll ever be rolling it back in again.
it's just going to remain like this until I use it and then I just slice off the piece and put it in the recycling. So if next, I don't know if I want to do the uh, drill press or the chop saw next. That will be determined when the video drops. But anyhow, I do have to buy some parts for the drill press. I mean, I've got most of the gears and everything I want. I need a new top and that's, you know, you know birch lumber is just, birch plywood is just nuts price wise. But uh, I do want to make out a good stable piece of, uh, of plywood. I'm also debating whether or not, I think I, I mentioned this in a previous video. I'm just so thinking, I'm also thinking if maybe later on down the road I want to convert that to the floor model because there is a conversion kit that, that, uh, that uh, Technotool sells. Uh, not right now, it's working fine. I don't see any need to do that. But if I ever do, it's available. I, was, I wanted a, for my other videos, you know, I wanted a floor model, but this, this thing works great. So anyway, uh, uh, that this, that's this project done. Short little shop video. Um, I'll start shooting the next one soon. Um, we're in the middle of a couple of things. Oh, one last thing. Those who have stuck with me through all of this know about Mara. She had some medical issues and she has kept her out of the shop. She developed cancer, uh, stage two breast cancer. She's now clear. Her chemo with the pills ended a month ago, and now it's getting her strength and stamina back. But that seems to be coming on pretty quick. So she's fine. She's going to be fine. Until next time, again, make great things out of wood. Protect your bench. And see ya.